Now it's the day we learned how many young people have applied to university, despite the new higher fees. And the controversy hasn't gone away. A recent report suggested that most students won't ever earn enough to pay back their loans, leaving the government with a massive bill. And in many universities, the protests continue. Figures released today by the University Admissions Service show the number of students applying for a place this year has fallen by nearly 9%. Some say this is due to the rise in tuition fees. Now you may have thought the battle over fees was lost, but there are still some lively protests going on around the country and here in the Midlands. An occupation at the University of Birmingham. When students took over an abandoned building on campus, security moved in as fellow students tried to join the protest or deliver supplies which they claimed were being blocked. The students filmed what happened next. Meet Hattie. We asked her to explain why she was protesting. Well, we disagree with the changes that are happening in higher education at the moment. Uh, we're angry about the fact that they've tripled um, the amount that universities can now charge. While students are worrying about starting their lives with so much debt, some economists are arguing that actually the government will end up spending more through the new system than the old. A report by investment managers Scandia says only graduates with a starting salary of £50,000 will pay back their loans in full. With salaries like that out of reach for most, it's predicted that in 30 years the country will face a massive bill as unpaid loans are written off. If you're not employed, you don't pay it. If after 30 years there is still an amount outstanding, you have nothing else to pay off. I'm not surprised that students um, are, are protesting in terms of the increase in the amount of fees, but I'm not sure that it's been presented to them as effectively as it might be. Back in Birmingham, to stop the occupation, the university paid for an unprecedented High Court injunction that meant the students had to leave or face arrest. The injunction bans all occupations on campus for the next 12 months, with students facing fines or arrest if they carry on. This move by the university has been criticised, with Amnesty International saying this could have a chilling effect on the legitimate exercise of fundamental human rights and should not be used as an excuse to prevent protests that are merely inconvenient or embarrassing. The Vice-Chancellor of the University of Birmingham, who turned down our request for an interview, denies that he's trying to suppress protests and in a statement said the university got the injunction because the building was unsafe for that number of people and because of social network statements suggesting further occupations were going to happen the next day. But at Nottingham University, the main author of an alternative white paper on education, signed by hundreds of academics, is highly critical of Birmingham's vice-chancellor. I think it's very unfortunate and rather heavy-handed because I think that you know, students do engage in protest and one of the reasons why they engage in protest is they're eng engaged and lively young people and what they were doing by occupying was not simply sitting in but creating a space for debate. But what do people away from the corridors of learning think? Is university a privilege students should have to pay for? Or will the new fees saddle students with unreasonable debt? I've got a nephew, actually, who's been through it all. He's got his doctorate, you know, degrees, and he can't get a job. I have a grandson who went to university, and the very first thing they did when they got there was to take them on an almighty booze-up. I mean, if you've got the driving desire and you want it strong enough, people like Sir Alan Sugar, they didn't need that. They went out and did it themselves, so if you really want something, you'll make it happen. You won't find an excuse and you won't need someone to open the door for you. Would you recommend uni to other people, especially with the increase in fees? No. The Education Minister, David Willits, himself no stranger to being on the receiving end of protest action by students, has a particular affection for the University of Birmingham. His family come from the city 
and his great-grandfather was a glazier who helped install the stained glass windows in the Great Hall. So what does he make of the continuing demonstrations? I say to the, to the students, and I enjoy meeting the students, and especially students from the University of Birmingham, coming from Birmingham, and with many family ties to that great university, I say to them, look, this is a fair way of financing our education, and it's going to ensure that universities like Birmingham are well financed in the future, and it's in the interests of young people to have financially strong universities with uh, uh, declined in the size of uh, seminars with better equipped laboratories and libraries. That's what we're paying for. That's in your long-term interest. And if you're a well-paid graduate, then you pay back. And if you're not in a well-paid job, you don't. Meanwhile, at the University of Birmingham, the students remain determined to be heard. They call their next tactic a jogupation. The idea of the jogupation was that um, we were going to run round um, the university, um, kind of three buildings and um, round the campus, um, and see kind of how security react, and kind of illustrate the ridiculousness of the fact that um, the university security kind of employed to chase their own students. Some students have criticised the protests carried out by a minority as disruptive and pointless. But academics who argue that higher education should be publicly funded and not shifted onto students believe that Birmingham's Vice-Chancellor is actively trying to suppress debate. He has recently argued in the Guardian newspaper that in fact public debate is unfortunate and important policy areas like education ought to be resolved by senior civil servants and ministers behind closed doors. While he wouldn't comment, it's alleged that even the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Birmingham, who sat on the Brown Review, which came up with the higher fees, doesn't believe the new scheme is sustainable. In the longer term, it will not save money. It will cost more money than, the present, than, the, uh, than at present. You're saying that the, the government has got it wrong. but. The government won't admit that, will they? No government ever wants to admit that it has got it wrong. Governments aren't prepared to do it, and that's why opposition and debate is important, because if governments do get it wrong, the people who pay are the public, not the government. The latest move at Birmingham led to a sit-in outside the Vice-Chancellor's office. We wanted to show them that, despite the fact they had this injunction, um, it wasn't going to stop us um, from continuing with... Um, a peaceful protest on campus. Students across the country say they'll continue to fight the fees on behalf of younger generations. Further protests are being planned that will mean people from all over the country come to the Birmingham campus next month to campaign against the injunction and the increased fees. Public interest lawyers are now representing the students and have demanded the injunction be removed immediately, saying it represents an unacceptable restriction on the students' legitimate right to protest. The university says it is planning more formal debate around the fees. Despite the drop in applications, Minister David Willits insists the new system is fair. Well, let's be clear about it. If people don't earn more than £21,000 a year, they don't pay back. And that's quite rightly so. That is the design of the system. So who picks up the tab? Uh, the taxpayer picks up the tab if people don't earn more than £21,000 a year. And we reckon that roughly for every £1,000 we lend, we get £700 back because the graduates are by and large in well-paid jobs. But if for whatever reason you're unemployed or you're not earning so much, then you don't pay back. And that's a deliberate feature of the system. That's why people shouldn't worry about it. And for the 44,000 who did worry, economists say investing in education still pays off. Should the government love things unchanged? Clearly there are pros and cons to that. The fact of the matter is, those kids looking at going to university clearly have information now that tells them that there's a spectacular advantage in going to university, both from a salary point of view and from a life experience point of view. Take it. So what do you think? You can join in the discussion on our Facebook page, Inside Out West Midlands.